Welcome to Carleton's Math Corner. Today we're going to continue our study on inequalities. At this time, please make sure you have a math journal, something to write with, as well as your vocab packet. Our target today is I can solve and graph multi-step inequalities. Uh, here's our inequality in blue, and what do you notice about it? Well, I notice that there is a lot going on in this inequality. We have parentheses and a number on the outside. So I remember back when we worked with solving uh, multi-step equations, I know that we use the distributive property uh, to simplify that. I also noticed that there are variables on one side as well as on the other side. And luckily they're like terms, so we can combine those. Um, I noticed there's inverse operations going on to get you know the variable by itself to isolate it and then I noticed that the graph actually looks very similar to how we've already graphed uh, for one step uh, inequalities so let's look at this and try to determine you know what are our steps well our first step I notice is um, the distributive property because if I take 3 times a negative 3 I will get negative 9 and if I take 3 times negative 4 that will get me to negative 12 and then everything else remain the same. So that's got to be my first step. Then I notice that the negative 9x and the negative 2x have been put together. So it looks like we're combining like terms on one side. If I put those together now I get negative 11x and everything else remains the same. Now subtracting 15x it it looks like we are trying to move our variable to one side and in order to do that we need to do the inverse operation so if I subtract now I get negative 26x and the minus 2 stays the same the 14 stays the same and then the last step looks like we're just trying to isolate that variable so inverse is addition we get 26 and then we divide by negative 26 now, I want you to notice something because I purposely put something in here that's incorrect. Do you remember from our last video, what is the thing that's actually incorrect? Oh, you guys are rock stars. Do you notice this actually needs to be switched? What should it be? I'm going to put it in red. It should be less than y. Yeah, look, we divided by a negative 26. So when we're dividing by a negative, a negative number, remember, that actually makes it go to the less than side. So actually, all this is moved to the other side because we want to, we want it, or every, all of our solutions flipped. So it's no longer greater than, now they're all less than negative one. Okay, um, and so still though, we still have an open dot because this is a less than symbol. So the open dot stays the same, but we want solutions now that are smaller than negative one. So what steps did we do? Well, we did the distributive property first, then we combined like terms on the same side um, we combine like terms on the opposite side. We isolated the variable, um, but we had to remember if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. And then we graph the inequality on the number line. Now I want you to look at this next one and tell me there's something different about this one. What's, what's going on in this one? Yeah, do you guys notice that there's this denominator here so there's a fraction and do you remember in the past when we were working with solving equations we don't want to work with fractions okay so what happened here why am I multiplying everything by three exactly I'm trying to get a well first of all I'm getting a common denominator and there's only one the rest of these have a one as a denominator, so I can stick with three. But I gotta multiply everything through, but why isn't this part multiplied by three? 
Exactly. If I actually multiply this fraction by 3, what happens is the 3's cancel out. So all that's left is the 2x minus 4. I put parentheses around it because I want you to see that that is actually the whole numerator on the top of this fraction. So they kind of stick together. Okay, so I have to do 3 times negative 8 and 3 times 12. And then the threes kind of disappear on this fraction. Now, I get negative 24, but why is it negative 2x? Exactly, this negative right here is really kind of like a negative one. So it's really the distributive property. We are taking negative one and we're distributing it out. So it's negative one times two is negative two and negative one times negative four is positive four. And then we have three times 12 is 36. Now we've, kind of, we've got down to a two-step equation. I can do inverse operations. And then it looks like I'm dividing by negative 26 on both sides um, because I'm trying to get x by itself. Now I know I get a fraction on this one, but if I simplify it, I mean really this is a little over negative one. I mean it's close to negative one, but it's negative one and three thirteenths. Um, but notice what happened to the sign. It switched um, because remember anytime you divide by a negative, we have to flip that sign. Um, so now it's greater than, greater than or equal to. So I can plot this. I have negative 1 and 3 thirteenths about right there. I know it's about an estimate. And then it's shaded in because it's greater than or equal to. And then we're going off into the positives because this is a greater than. Okay. So our steps are a little bit different. Um, the only thing that's been added is we have to get rid of fractions. And we multiply through, we multiply with a denominator to get rid of those fractions. But everything else stayed the same. Okay, just remember when you multiply or divide by a negative, the, the symbol flips. Okay, I want you to try two problems. Um, follow the steps. Sometimes you have to follow, you know, add fractions to it, and sometimes they don't have any fractions, so you can just skip it. If this step um, if they don't, you know, if you don't have a step, you know, like for instance, if you don't have parentheses, like this one right here, I don't have any parentheses. So I'm not going to be using just the distributive property, but I do have a fraction. So I need to start there I start with fractions, make sure to multiply every single term by that denominator and then combine like terms and move on through the other steps. Okay. Check them off as you go. You know, make sure that you don't miss a step. Thank you so much for joining me at Carlton's Math Corner, and I look forward to meeting with you again. Have a great day.